think we need to do a little bit of a recap uh, to catch us up to what is happening at the cross bridge that we're going to form between Acton and Myosin. And so just as a little bit of a review, here is Acton, which is also the thin filament. Remember, there's two strands of Acton together, wound together and twisted, kind of like a double helix of DNA. And we also have some regulator proteins attached to actin, one of them being tropomyosin and troponin. So troponin, I'm going to put that one here as a box, and tropomyosin as a sort of a chain running through actin. So here is tropomyosin. All right, so there is tropomyosin, and I just made the little T as an arrow up to the green. And so troponin and tropomyosin are the two regulator proteins. They're going to control whether or not actin gets to interact with this much larger protein called myosin. And these filaments, these myofilaments, here's myosin. This is the thick filament. These are the filaments that are involved in making the skeletal muscle shorter. In other words, to make your bicep go from long or extended to flexed. And so the length of the muscle will actually change. How does that happen at this level? And just to retell that little story that I mentioned uh, in the notes, when we think of troponin and tropomyosin, we could think of those as the parent sort of the parent proteins who are regulating actin's interaction with myosin. And so I've underlined P for papa and M, let's underline M for mom. So we've got mom and dad. And mom and dad, if you'll visualize them, are standing next to actin. So here's a troponin and tropomyosin standing arm in arm next to actin. And Tropomyosin, who is mom, has her hands, her little protein hands, over actin's eyes. And she's blocking the binding site, the place where actin would be able to interact with myosin. So she's standing there like this, and troponin, dad, is standing next to her. Now troponin is the thing that's going to respond to our very important ion, which is calcium. And so you might be wondering, you know, you think about muscle contraction, calcium is really the most important ion in addition to sodium that was important to depolarize the membrane. But calcium was let out of the terminal cisterns and by the voltage-gated calcium channels. And there's two receptors, you'll see them uh, in the notes. But it is let out and it floods into the sarcomere area. And where it floods to is troponin. So calcium is going to go to troponin, and troponin is going to bind it. Calcium binds to troponin. When that happens, you can think about it as if calcium was delivered uh, to the front door, and dad went to answer the door. And when he did that, he bound calcium and said, hello, it's good to see you. And mom said, who's there? And she walks to the door, too, to see, oh, she says, oh, calcium's here. When she leaves to go see who's at the door with troponin, she takes her hands off of actin's binding site. And now actin can see myosin. So there's a little binding site on every actin, and there's a little binding site on every myosin. And these two want to form what's called a cross bridge. A cross bridge is when those two things are connected when actin and myosin are actually allowed to bind at their respective sites to one another. So let's think a little bit about that's actin's story. We know that tropomyosin and troponin leave or move off of the site, particularly tropomyosin, moves off of actin's binding sites, and now actin can actually make contact with myosin. What is happening for myosin during this story? You know, we've, we've heard actin's story, what's happening for myosin? And so let's talk about 
what myosin has going on. You see that actin has the regulator proteins. What's going on with myosin? We want myosin to bind with actin and then pull actin towards or over the connection that they have made together. And then we want actin to be detached and we want myosin to grab yet another actin and pull it over towards where we're we going is towards the center. Do you remember that a sarcomere, a sarcomere has two ends and those two ends are demarcated by something called a Z line, which looks much like a Z, the letter Z. And in the middle, there's an M line, the middle for M. So this is the M line. And then you've got an H line, uh, an A, a band, and an I band. But we're going to leave that out of this picture just for simplicity. Myosin is the thick filament. Myosin is the thick filament that is attached or emanating from the M line. And I'll just draw a couple of little myosins here. This is the thick myofilament that is attached to the M line. Conversely, the thin myofilament that is attached to the Z line coming from the other direction. So here is actin coming from the other direction, surrounding myosin. And again, actin is being kept from myosin until the troponin and tropomyosin move away. So I've got myosin here as the thick filament and actin as the thin filament. I want myosin to grab actin and pull the Z band or the Z line towards the M line. So what will happen in effect is that the two Z lines will move towards one another when myosin is able to uh, bond to all the actin. And the Z lines will move towards each other and the muscle will shorten. Okay? So again, what's happening at the myosin side of the story? How is myosin affected by this whole situation? Myosin looks like that golf club, right? So that marker is no good. Let's draw it a little darker here. There's myosin. There's the myosin binding site. Myosin has two things attached to it that it uses a lot, actually three things. It likes to use ATP. And it likes to split because myosin is an enzyme. So myosin contains Myosin contains ATPase, which means that myosin acts like an enzyme. And myosin splits ATP into two things. It splits it into ADP and phosphate, one little phosphate. So if I put these back together, this is like splitting water, right? So if I put this back together, ADP, adenosine diphosphate, with one more phosphate, I get three phosphates, adenosine triphosphate. That's what's happening at myosin's beginning. Let's, let's envision if we can. I'm going to put on my myosin hat for just a minute because I've got to turn into myosin in order to do this. So here I am as myosin, right? Uh, very good looking. Yes. So I am myosin. I have on my yellow myosin hat. And I think I'm going to lower actin into the picture so you can see actin. Here is represented by this pool noodle. And I've got some binding sites uh, on actin right there. And myosin's head, this part here up here, has a little site at the top of it. And in order to bind with actin, we need to have ADP and phosphate. ADP and phosphate with myosin in this forward position. And this forward position is called cocked or ready. Myosin is kind of resting in this position, but myosin is ready at any point in this position. So if you're just sitting there and you're not moving your muscles, if you suddenly get the impulse to move your muscle, myosin's ready. And that's why I'm leaning forward just a little bit to show you. I am ready too. I look like I'm going to jet off here. So I've got ATP 
and phosphate, and that means I'm ready. And I'm also going to lower this because I'm not very tall. So I've got ADP and phosphate, and I'm ready. I look up and see that uh, the binding sites are free, that calcium has been delivered, and actin and myosin can now make a cross bridge. And so I'm going to make one. I'm going to see if I can grab an actin there. And I've got one. I think that if I throw the phosphate down, I can really grab actin. And that is, in fact, what happens with the phosphate when when myosin drops that phosphate, the grip that it gets uh, or the bonding strength becomes very strong. And also, just notice that I'm leaning forward. I think when I let go of the ADP, I can grip with both hands, and then I can stand up. And now I'm standing up. So I have pulled myosin towards me, towards the middle of the muscle, but now I'm stuck. I am stuck to myosin, and I need to unstick. And the only way to unstick, the only way to unstick is for ATP to show up. And now ATP is going to show up, and I can unstick. That's great. Thanks, ATP. I can now look at the next binding site now that I have this ATP. And I think it will be more useful because I want that strength from the ADP and the phosphate if I just cut the ATP in half again so that I'm left again with ADP and phosphate. And then again, I can see and I can go up and grab one. Good, and I'm ready, and I'll get rid of the phosphate and grab on really tight and get rid of the ADP and pull. And now I've made even more progress, Kate, but I'm, I'm stuck again. What molecule do I need to break this cross bridge so that I can reset? Right. I need ATP. Somebody throw ATP my way, would you? Okay. All right. So that's it from the myosin perspective. Have a good day.